Hey, I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber, and today I'm coming to you with a special guest to talk about how we got into the union and where all you can work in the United States if you want to. And we're going to talk about it right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Well, guys, I have a special guest in here today, and this is Richard Johnston. And Richard is with Southwest Pipe Trades. And I met Richard when I got into the union and became an instructor. He worked for a different company, but, you know, we ran into each other. We crossed paths a lot. And, and Richard is really someone that I respect because of not just what he does for the union and for the trades itself, but, but because of, of how smart he is. And I really do enjoy talking to him about a lot of things. Well, you give me a lot of credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, he's just, he, he, he's, he's one of these people that, that really, when he gets into something, he really wants to learn about it. Here in a little bit, we'll tell you how to get in touch with Richard and how to get in touch with myself if you want to learn more about getting into the union or what the benefits might be. And, and this is no matter where you're at. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're here in the Dallas area where we are, and you'll find out in a minute where all he's at. But, but Richard, l let's get into how did you get into the union? How did you get into the trades at all? Oh, man. Well, it started, you know, I, had a, I was working at a grocery store when I was in high school, you know, and then I got it when, when I graduated from high school. I had this aspiration, hey, after working at this store, we had one freezer case, and that just continually had problem every six months it would go down and we'd have to take all the product out of it it would melt down and had all this slime and goo that we had to pull out and put in in you know in shopping carts take it to the back to where we could get credit you know from from the supplier so when, when they would when that uh, case would melt down or the cases would melt down or get warm well the guys would come in they, they came in they punched our time clock and then they went, went over to the case and they looked in it and then they walked around the back and they did you know pull some parts off you know and then they they looked at things and adjusted stuff and they were there about two or three hours and then you didn't see them and then they they would say hey um we got the case up and going and so um we're gonna go and drink some coffee we'll be back and they wouldn't come back for like three or four hours and then by the time the end of the, my shift you know at five they would come back in about a 45 minutes before that and go in and check temperatures and we'll be back in the morning. That looks looking real good. And I thought, man, I need that kind of job where I can sit in a coffee shop for three or four hours in a day, do a little bit of work and not have to do anything. So anyway, I went to school at, at, at Eastfield, started off there. And then uh, I was having to take so many classes outside of, of a regular classroom setting. I thought, well, I'm going to go in the army and I'll have uncle Sam pay for that. So I went in the army for a couple of years, went to Europe, came back. And I went to Oklahoma State Tech because that was a Oklahoma State Tech and TSTI and Waco were the only two real training uh, facilities for air conditioning at the time. So I completed that two-year program in, in in Oklahoma, and we had interviewer weekend or, or week. The guys came in from Carrier. There was all these businesses that came in because they had a real hiring pool there. And Carrier Building Systems and Services came in from Dallas and Oklahoma City. And they interviewed me, and they, I was coming back to Dallas, and so they hired me as a as a what they called a provisionary apprentice. I was a PA, and so oh, that's yeah. where I started my career. <laughs> and I didn't have any kinfolk in in the in the trade, but with that, you know, I had a background uh, of a basic air conditioner refrigeration, and I was like a uh, a test. I was an experiment to see, hey, is this guy going to go forward? Well, how is he trainable or or what have you and so and i started there worked with carrier for two or three four years went to a mechanical contractor company uh another company for like 15 years learned the hydronics the centrifugal side of the business the heavy split systems and then i left and went back to carrier and then i turned out as a service manager i took a job as a service manager for, like a company for you as yourself for air conditioning and refrigeration and in heating and plumbing and then from there, I went to, to um, the service sales side of it. And then I became a recruiter organizer for the United Association. So, so when you got into Carrier right out of Oklahoma State Technical, was that, your, was that a union position then? That was a union position. And you see, I, at the time, I didn't know that anything other than the, I was in the retail clerks union. And that was a, 
kind of different. Uh, but anyway, they said, oh, you'll have to join the union. I said, well, I've got no problem with that because I've been a union employee before. So um, with that, I made an application, and then I was accepted into school, and and then they supported the, the things or the, the curriculum that I didn't have, like hydronics, which, you know, plumbers need hydronics as Absolutely. well if they're in, in a commercial building. I got domestic water loops and systems and pumps. I got steam. I got all the industrial side of the of, of the trait that I didn't get in the light commercial residential training that I that I participated in, in in Oklahoma State Tech. And 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 we all get in in different ways. And I and I get people leave me comments all the time. You know, I, I want to get into plumbing, but but I know nothing about it. Right. Well, I know nothing about plumbing before I got into it either. But you know, I was working. I was 16 years old. I was working right here in Garland at a, a hamburger place, <laughs> and and I, and I was the manager. Okay. And, and one of my best friends worked for me, and, and it was slow one night, and we, we were there cleaning, and, and and he looked at me really funny. He says, "Are are, are you going to do this forever?" And I'm like, "Man, I am 16 years old. I am managing a restaurant. Psh, life is good. <laughs> life is good." And, and it's really funny because he looked at me and says, "So, if you were to get fired, who would hire you as a 16 year old restaurant manager?" And man, I was just like, wow. And, and this is 1980. Right. And, you know, in, in 1980, his next statement, and, and I mean, he told me about his brothers and his father, and they were all plumbers, and they did really good, and they enjoyed it, and, and, and it was fun and whatnot, and they, they made a good living. But his next statement is really what sealed the deal. And in 1980, he said, robots will never be able to do plumbing. Now, remember, in the 80s, yeah, yeah, man, robots yeah, are going to take over. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he, and, and during that, we didn't even hardly have solid state. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I mean, literally, it was like, wow, you know what? He's right. And I ended up quitting school my junior year. So the, the, the last half of my junior year and, and that summer, I got a job with one of his brothers. And, 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 I, and I still remember my first plumbing job was down at Wells Fargo, uh, the bank down off Gaston and Abrams. It was a remodel that they, they were adding on. And, and that was my first job, plumbing. And I loved it. And, and we were, I mean, it was almost like a cross between repair and construction. It, it was a remodel. So it was really interesting and, and fun, and I enjoyed it. But I also realized over that summer, I want to go back to school. So I went back to high school, graduated with my class. Okay. Luckily, I, w- I was far enough ahead when I quit right. that, that I didn't have to do a lot extra, but, but I did have to do some. But after I got out of school, I went right back into plumbing. Yeah. And, you know, my, my path to the union was a little bit different because I worked open shop. And, and all I'd ever heard open shop is, and it was actually from, from my buddy's dad, yeah. and, and he was familiar with the union. He, he had done plumbing in and around Dallas forever. And he said, you know, you don't want to join the union. That They will stand over your shoulder. They tell you how many fittings you can put in a day. They tell you when you can go to the restroom, uh, when you can't go to the restroom. And, and, and I'm like, man, that is, that is, that is not for me. <laughs> and it's funny because... In 97, one of his other brothers had got into the union, and, and I called him one day, and I said, man, look, I'm wanting to get back into commercial work. What do you recommend? And, and he sent me down to talk to Joe Hall down at the union, and, and I signed up on a Friday, and I think I got a phone call Monday or Tuesday, and I got up. Never, never look yeah, back. Yeah, se- se- <laughs> September 15th, back. 97. <laughs> yeah, and uh, they didn't tell you how many fittings to put in? No, no, no. <laughs> it's just man, it's just like any other plumbing job. Look, there it is. Get it done. Yeah, the only thing is, is you got you have to, if you're on a construction job, they have to keep it orderly, you know, on, on your break time and your restroom time, unless it's just dire, you got to go. And, a- and absolutely. It's a involuntary function. You just got to do I've never had anybody do. tell me you can't go to the restroom. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, so, so, so getting in the union, union, our paths were a little bit different. But, but here's the neat thing that I learned about the union, and, and, and you and I have talked about it, is if, if I wanted to move down to Austin right now, I could, I could probably get a job Absolutely. in the union. Absolutely. See, there's the, the United Association of Plumbers and Pipe Fitters has 275 locals throughout the United States and Canada. So at any now, are we still in Australia too? Because I know a few years back we had brought Australia in, or were we talking about Australia? It? Is 
it, it includes Canada and Australia, but okay. Australia doesn't participate in in the per capita. If you that's the money side of that, in the retirement side of of, of our union, but. One thing about Australia, they have been very, very instrumental in helping us develop our water reclamation systems because their rain water and their, their watershed is, is limited to seasons, and they have got that down to a science, and they, and they work with our United Association. You know, I used to be a member of Green Plumbers USA, which was started by the what is it, Australian Master Plumbers. I think that's I the think group so. over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Green Plumbers was started over there by them. Okay. And then uh, – you know, John Cruz and Peter McCoy and some people brought Green Plumbers USA over. And I used to be a member of that. And, I mean, it, it, guys, if you want to learn anything about water conservation and water reclamation, Green Plumbers USA is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. But so if if I became a plumber in, in the United Association, I can pretty much work anywhere in the United States I want to work. Absolutely. And um uh, you might as well say that the United Association is the network. We're the network, okay? So we've got all these locals throughout the United States and Canada. Um, right now, just we Dallas, Texas has seventeen hundred members. Okay, not I don't know what the, the the ratio is to plumbers to pipe fitters to I know the air conditioning refrigeration side of it is probably around about one hundred and sixty to one hundred and 80 strong. There's a branch got a, a boiler group that fits into the service side of it, so it's incorporated in that as well. But we've got we've got jobs in their own. Pennsylvania right now is a hot spot. I mean, and, and with that, it's whatever their wage is. Plus, they have a per diem package that that if you're out of work or if you want to travel to an to out of uh, state or to another, another jurisdiction, you have that opportunity. I mean, no one's going to tell you that you can't go. If it, there's a massive production at Intel, we we uh, in Arizona they had one in Intel uh, had a chip plant there and a pharmaceutical um, plant that, that was kicking off, and in uh, New Mexico had um, uh, Intel on on just the pharmaceutical side or excuse me on the on the chip plant side of that. We've got we've got 150 orbital welders and pipe fitters on the road right now. We've got 90 plumbers, um, you know, commercial plumbers on the road right now and they're and I think that we're going to have another 30 more uh, you know in a week or so and because they're high paying jobs they're working hours and when I say hours they're working um, better than most of them working 60 plus hours you know so and that adds, that adds up quick. That adds up quick because it's time and a half after, before or eight after before or after eight hours in a work day Saturdays is time and a half and depending on what their collective bargaining agreement uh, states um, in Dallas, after 12 hours on a Saturday or any day is, is double time. And you have to have an eight-hour gap between the time you quit and the time you start on that, to, or you go back on double time on that shift. And and it's just all there. They, there's there's money to be made. And some of these guys travel and work these jobs month on end. And then when that job is over, they'll come back home and they'll sit for about a month and they'll just – Piddle around because they've got a boatload of cash in the bank. And they set by choice. It's by choice. Yes. <laughs> so, and we're going to talk more about that here in a little bit in the union, but, and, and I don't want to go into a lot of depth as what cities and where and whatnot, but union scale is different across the United States. Absolutely. You made a comment about that a while ago, you know, that they go here for more money. You know, what is the low end? What is the high end? On union scale, and this would be for plumbers, pipe fitters, welders across the United States. Low end would be down in in the lower part of doesn't matter where is probably around twenty six or twenty seven dollars on the check, plus around eight to ten dollars in fringe benefits. Okay. High end on the scale is about ninety seven dollars on the check, with about twenty five dollars you know per hour on the on the. Um, uh, fringe side and, and i'll tell you guys here in dallas it, it's it's not bad uh especially compared to open shop we do pretty good the the benefits package it, it, it's different you know all across the united states also so you know if you are in the union or you're not like i said leave a comment down below and let us know what you think the benefits are to you and why you prefer it that way and Richard, if people wanted to get in touch with you, I, I, I know we've talked about it in other videos, but how can they get in touch with Richard Johnston from Southwest Pop Trades? Okay, you can call me on my cell phone. My cell phone number is 469-520-1261. 
Or, I mean, if you want to email me, I could give you that also. It's uh, SWPTOR10 at UANet.org. So, you know how to get in touch with Richard. My cell phone number is not available to you. Uh, you I'm well, Roger Wakefield. <laughs> <laughs> you can get in touch with me down below. We will have links in here. Guys, if you're a business owner or, or you're thinking about becoming one, I would recommend connecting with me on LinkedIn. The reason being is I do a lot of things over there. I'm actually one of 12 people in the world to start out doing LinkedIn Live. The reason that they told me that is because of the quality of videos that we're doing over here and, and the way we respond and engage to people. So, you know, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you're in the union or you're not, and you want to tell us why, leave a comment down below and let us know. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.